Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of The Straight Path. I'm your host, Fuad Muhammad. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. And how can we use Ramadan to understand the principles and to understand the objectives of why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how can we synchronize both of the meanings of worship and Quran? That is our topic today on The Straight Path. And we have our guest with us today, Dr. Muhammad Saeed, who is a professor at uh, the world-renowned Al-Azhar University. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. and welcome to the Straight Path. Alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's good to have you back. Let us look a bit about the importance that you, you're talking about the kids and, and the family. What's the role of the, of the father? Because we know that uh, yani, the, 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 the man of the house is responsible and he is the one who overlooks his family, right? Um, What's his role in terms of uh, inculcating Qur'an into his family? It is a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question him about the time of his kids mm -hmm. spending a lot of time in front of the series, in front of the episodes, or in front of the cartoons mm -hmm. and abandoning the book of Allah. We must have a daily halaqa at least. Mm -hmm. Why the husband, why we think about our relation between us, the husband and the wife, it just it's a, a relationship which, which may be sometimes in, only in the bed, mm -hmm. why we, we think to our wives just for amusement and entertainment mm -hmm. for an hour, two hours a day, mm -hmm. just sitting, chatting. Why we don't have a halaqa? We don't have a session yeah. for the Quran. Why mm -hmm. we don't gather together about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We read a portion and everybody brings up an idea that he concluded from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we discuss it. Why we don't do it weekly or even daily? Why we don't have a khatma with your wife? You, you recite a portion and she recites a portion. She recites a portion. I'm quite sure that all the problems will dissolve, inshallah, if we gather together for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because people are promised the angels to lower their wings, mm -hmm. uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ascend, and the tranquility to come when the family gather together for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. This is a blessing. In okay, itself. can you give, an, give us an example? How can we do this halaqa in our home? We can make it even maybe after Fajr. Mm -hmm. We may make after after Taraweeh, immediately before going to bed. We just gather all the family members, uh, Quran, books, everybody reads. And at the end, we start giving the opportunity to everybody to bring, what did you understand? So we keep up with reading, understanding, and then how to act, to put the kids into tests. How, to, how, how can we uh, practice this ayah? How can we translate it into action? Like, for example, how to, uh, ayat, for example, talking about uh, how to reap piety of Allah through fasting. So we train them how to make hidden charity. So you, you ask the kids who will do it, and then you come with feedbacks from them. We need to be also a model example. The Prophet ﷺ used to recite the whole Quran, and used to recite it during the tahajjud, and he used to lead Ibn Abbas. Ibn mm. Abbas was a little child. And you used to lead him with long portions of the Quran. The Sahaba used actually to teach their kids the book of Allah. This is the best gift a person can give to his uh, children mm -hmm. uh, based on understanding and reading and, and putting it into practice. Okay, since we're concentrating on inculcating the Quran in the home, um, you know the tradition and the cultures of today's society is far different from the society uh, yesteryears. Um, of course, the kids have the internet, they have all the video games. Um, the schools are so taxing these days. I mean, the amount of things that they have to study in, in primary and secondary school was never like, even my time, Yanni. It's much more, they have to spend so much more. And, um, and it's become a tradition in society as well, Doctor, that um, people prefer to give that to their kids. That uh, once they do well in school, then everything comes secondary. The Quran comes in only during the summer months, right? I, I know, subhanAllah, I have kids and you have kids. And uh, the problem is that sometimes we underestimate the ability of our kids. Mm -hmm. We say that they are not able to memorize. They will mm -hmm. not be able to read. They will not 
uh, be able to accommodate that time. But subhanAllah, you tolerate them mm -hmm. to watch a lot of cartoons. Mm -hmm. You wake them up for the school, but you forget actually to wake them up for the Fajr prayer. Mm -hmm. You forget, you, you take them to a lot of amusements and entertainment here and there. And you forget to accompany them to the mosque. How can we change this thinking, doctor? How can we change it? So many episodes we've talked about it, about inculcating the, the life of the Quran in our home, um, putting Allah's deen in front of everything that is dunya, we, but it's not negating the, the worldly affairs. We're not taking it out completely. How is it that a person can really put forward um, the aspects of his religion in front of the aspects of his worldly life? Steps, number one, mm. seeking the help of Allah through dua. Number two, loving the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being sincere about this deen. Number three, gathering the family, you and your, and your wife, and tell her we have a goal. We need our family to be oriented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a good merchandise for the Jannah. And number three, uh, planting love for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through rewards. Giving, um, don't make it difficult for the kids getting the kids to the masjid, showing them brilliant examples sometimes, uh, giving them rewards every while and then, mm. uh, training them to memorize, uh, helping them. Um, and, and this but this way, has to come with the examples from the parents. Examples from the parents. Mm. And I heard about a lot of parents that they memorize the Quran along with their kids. Mm -hmm. So they train themselves in memorization and the, at, the, at the same time teaching them. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes as a model example. We need to concentrate on the rule of family nowadays because we have a lot of the globalization system, the satellites, the internet. We are being, as Muslim culture, we actually invaded everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you cannot seclude your kids away from the whole world, but you need to put in their hearts a criterion by which they can distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the best gifts. From my own experience, the best thing that I can get in my life, the best illumination and guidance I have is the book of Allah. It did not affect my studies. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people, they are very successful professors, they are very successful doctors, engineers, and they memorize the book of Allah. The Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, will not return back to its glory except through the book of Allah. We heard about when the colonization colonizing most of the Muslim world, the people, they, they were banning actually the books about religion. And we heard about farmers and people in their fields memorizing the texts, the book of Allah, and telling them to each other. Because it is a responsibility also. Mm -hmm. When a person feels the responsibility of learning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving it to his kids and instead of letting them inherit anything. But let us being realistic, we need to make a balance in our time and in our efforts. We need to make it lovely for them. We need to make it attractive for them. Okay. We need to facilitate it for them, bringing them a teacher mm -hmm. and helping them uh, by, by, by making time. Sometimes some people, they make homeschooling, especially at the early stage. If you mm -hmm. concentrate at the early stage on the proper uh, memorization, mm -hmm. and we don't need only memorizers, mm -hmm. but memorization, this is the first step, but yes. later they will understand and they become a source of teaching them and guiding their behavior in the future. Inshallah. We're, we're talking about making it attractive. What are some of the tips we can, how we can make Quran attractive to our kid? We, we can use actually the internet now. We can use some software. We can give them uh, rewards. We can uh, make it easy for them starting with a few lines mm -hmm. and encouraging them to do more and more, teaching them those lines. Um, also giving them big prizes and being generous with the kids. All of these are, and sometimes when you, by, by leading by example, for example, when, when somebody was uh, noticed that it is boring for his child, so mm -hmm. he brought a tape for a kid and he put it in the car and he started playing it. So the kid felt jealous and he said, do you like to be like this kid? So you need to start. And this is anxiety, bringing up some anxiety in the hearts of the kids and don't be aware also don't be sad if your kids spent a lot of time and they did not start memorizing the Quran still you have hope in giving them the opportunity and the time in the future when they grow up still we have a lot of and we have a lot of uh, programs on the internet and a lot of institutes that now 
can use some software like Skype and all of those uh, software and having a teacher for each person like I heard about Al Furqan mm -hmm. Institute. It's just a, an example. Mm -hmm. uh, we can make all of those uh, things for our children. It's okay, it would be interesting. Inshallah. Okay, we'll talk more about the Quran, but however, we'll take an upper here on the straight path and we'll be back right after this. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Who was the first prophet? Was a prophet the first one to read and write? Did God speak to a prophet? A prophet in a prison. A prophet who commanded the birds, insects, and animals? Want to know more? Join us for Stories of the Prophets. Stories of the Prophets, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. <laughs> Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, you're watching The Straight Path. We talked about the blessings of the Quran. We talked about some of the things we need in order to inculcate the Quran into our lives and how to inculcate it into the lives of our families. And we're still talking to Dr. Muhammad Saeed, who is a professor in Al-Azhar University. So we were mentioning the first segment about the, the blessings of the Qur'an and how we, the Qur'an, its importance and the blessings in Ramadan. We talked about how to inculcate it into our lives. Um, if we can, we have a couple of minutes, um, if we can really concentrate, Doctor, because we have never really concentrated on an entire episode on, of how to really benefit from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, let, us, let us take a little step out of what we're discussing and let us concentrate a bit because most of our for, uh, most of our viewers are foreigners um, and some of them might not know Arabic um, how can they benefit from the Quran and what should they do uh, I, I need to concentrate that the month of Ramadan mm -hmm. is the month of planting trees of ibadat mm -hmm. of acts of worship which will bring fruits later on yeah so this is the reason when, you, by the end of Ramadan, some of the acts of worship you feel that is lacking behind, and you are not consistent, and you cannot continue, simply because you did not plant the tree well. Yes. So some of the ibadat they are fruits, and other ibadat they are like trees. Mm. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talked about salah, for example, and patience as trees, and He said, "Wastainu bil sabri wa salah." Seek help in prayers and in patience. Yes. And also Allah talked about telling the truth that it is a fruit of, or it is a tree that breeds fruits of righteousness. Mm -hmm. yes. Telling the truth, or the truth tells ultimately to righteousness. So number one, we need to train ourselves to have a relationship with the Quran. This relationship is not cut off. You must read the whole book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan. You must hold your mushaf day and night whenever it is possible and available for you 
don't waste it just a minute. I heard about a brother I was were inviting him for a cup of tea or something, and he said, you can do me a better favor. Just leave me for five minutes that you will invite me for, and it's better to read a page of the Quran. It will, it will benefit me more. It is, so it is a competition. Uh, number three, uh, don't miss any of a taraweeh. Don't miss the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ of making the itikaf and reading the Quran continuously during that. Expose the recitation with understanding the meanings. Mm -hmm. Try to act according to one ayah, even for just one time during the whole of your life. Umar ibn al-Khattab memorized the whole of Surah Al-Baqarah in 12 years. He never moved from one ayah till he put it into action. He made it. He realistically acted accordingly. So he tasted the benefit and the sweetness of the Quran. Also my advice for myself and for the brothers and the sisters, not to put the Quran again into the shelves by the end of Ramadan. No, the relationship must be poseless, mm -hmm. must be ceaseless. Mm -hmm. And this is very important. Try to benefit all the people around you through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very beneficial and very important. Mm -hmm. uh, try to read tafsir interpretation of the Quran, very simple one, mm -hmm. during the whole month of Ramadan. Concentrate on the book of Allah. Imam Malik used actually to close all the books of Hadith and all the books of Fiqh during the month of Ramadan and he used to dedicate himself mainly for the book of Allah. This is the month of Quran, the month of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. In prayer you recite Quran, in your road you recite the Quran, in your tram or in your metro you read the Quran, in your car this is the best. The Prophet said, سَبَقَ mufridun." Mm -hmm. They advanced it, Al-Mufridun. Who are the Mufridun? The Prophet said, أَذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّكَرَاتِ Those who remember Allah and mention Him by day and night. So much and the best type of dhikr is the Book of Allah. The Prophet said, لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف I do not say ألف لام ميم as one letter ألف is a letter لام is a letter and ميم is a letter and the one good deed may be multiplied to 700 and more according to the and the Prophet ﷺ when he passed by Ibn Mas'ud and was reciting the Quran in the masjid the Prophet ﷺ said سَلْ تُعْطَه ask supplicate and your supplication is definitely answered so the companion of the Quran the person who lives with the Quran is a blessed person his prayers are accepted his life is blessed his happiness is given his akhirah is granted his sin is forgiven and he is in the companionship of Allah the Prophet ﷺ, and the companionship of the great uh, angels Al-Mahiru Bil-Qur'ani Ma'as-Safara Al-Barara The one who is clever in reading and reciting the Qur'an is with the great angels of Allah who communicate the revelation to his prophets and messengers. Okay, coming back to the point that I just made here um, for, for the foreigners, I mean they would say Sheikh, but the Arabic is difficult and for those who know Arabic and doesn't know English they can read because in, in many Western countries People have memorized the Quran without knowing one letter in Ar the Arabic language. And mashallah, this is one of the miracles of the Quran. But um, what is better for them? They're asking, shouldn't I read the, the translation of the Quran where I can really ponder on the meanings? Or should I read it in Arabic in order to get the reward? Uh, you need to read in Arabic to get the reward and to understand the meaning also in English or in your language. Mm -hmm. So the step is to learn the Arabic alphabet step by step. Fatha, kasra, dhamma, spend some time. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, you spend a lot of time in learning medicine and learning engineering and getting a lot of certificates. Mm -hmm. It's time to dedicate a few weeks to the Quran mm -hmm. and to learn how to read it and how, because the Quran is in Arabic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiyan. It's written, uh, it is revealed to the Prophet ﷺ in Arabic. And you cannot taste the sweetness of the Quran, the true sweetness and halawa of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you delve into the miraculous nature of this language and to understand it. 
but don't let the, the shaitan mislead you. Okay. And if you are not able right now, mm. so you must read the book of Allah, even if the meaning in English. Many people are turning to this, the, the re reciting the Quran in transliteration. Is this correct? Uh, it is, if it is possible to pronounce all the letters correctly, there is no problem on that. Mm -hmm. There is no problem, inshallah. Okay, um, so, so, uh, oh, okay, so that's, that's the, the whole idea of learning the Quran and reciting it. Another question that, that comes up a lot in, in, in Ramadan, um, the last 10 nights, maybe we can just spend the last couple of minutes of the episode. Um, the last 10 nights are blessed nights. What are some of the acts of worship? And of course, during Ramadan, but what are some of the acts of worship that are recommended for these 10 nights? The best act of worship, actually, is after prayer and reciting the Quran during those nights mm -hmm. is dua, mm -hmm. making invocation and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shedding tears, soliciting his help mm -hmm. to save us, and to save the Muslim ummah, and to give you all the needs that uh, you crave after during the whole year. The Prophet ﷺ promised us that during the night of power, the night of revelation, Laylatul Qadr, the dua is accepted. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet ﷺ used to repeat this dua, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the forgiving. Forgive my sins. So this is one of the best acts and also the men we recommend for them not to leave the mosques. I'tikaf, the Prophet ﷺ made i'tikaf. Okay. To exert all the effort which is possible during the last 10 nights to await for the blessed night of revelation. And the scholars, according to the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, said that this night is expected in the odd of the last 10 nights. So it may be the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or the 29th. These are the nights which are expected. Let yourself holy for the masjid during the last 10 days, if it is possible. If it is not, spend the nights in the masjid and dedicate yourself because it is the reward is multiplied. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it, إِنَّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ The night of revelation is better than 1,000 months. You mm. can imagine 1,000 months mm. are reaped in just a few hours. Okay, we have about one and a half minutes remaining on the episode. I, if you can, we can ask you for, for one simple favor, Doctor, is to let's come back to the, the whole concept of the episode of Quran, Ramadan, and Quran out of Ramadan. If you can just sum it up for us in a minute or two and tell us how we need to return to the Quran. There is no Islam without Quran. Mm -hmm. And there is no Ramadan without Quran. Quran is the book of guidance, which guided the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and made them the leaders. And this Ummah will not return back to its glory in happiness, individually or collectively, until it reaches back to the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by reciting it, teaching it, learning it, understanding its message, applying it in every single detail and in every single question that they face in their life. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ascend his blessings on the ummah, blessings on the families, happiness and tranquility on all of our homes and for all of our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to preserve us and to grant us the nur the light of the Quran and the straight path of the Book of Allah. Jazakallah khair, Doctor. This is Dr. Muhammad Saeed there, a professor in Al-Azhar University. And I hope we can take the lessons from this episode and put it into our lives, practice it, try to make the Quran part of this Ramadan and part of it for the rest of our lives, inshallah. Till next time, I leave you with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is
is my sight, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight, now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Images, images, and depictions, and depictions of our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam have spread around the globe. May endless blessings be upon thee. His life is being examined in the glare of the global media spotlight. It is the duty of every Muslim, every Muslim to present to the world the truth of his life and the excellence of his character. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the universe. To do this, you have to know your prophet. It's something that you simply can't afford to be ignorant of. Send your peace on your slave Muhammad. Study the exemplary personality of our Prophet, peace be upon him, which attracts people of all faiths and nationalities in Know Your Prophet, peace be upon him. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Disagree or disagree to agree. To agree. Dispute superstitions and refute the myth which is created around the word religion, which is misinterpreted, misconstrued, and misjudged. misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion. Wake up from delusion and step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy. Reject or accept. Dispute or challenge. When caught in, crossfire. 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 Misconceptions clarified, falsehood exposed, and truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. UK on Peace TV.